When doing direct digital design, we have to design a digital controller to control an equivalent discrete plant model. The design technique we use is the digital root locus. In today's video, we look at how to use lead compensation with the digital root locus, which allows us to improve the transit response of the closed loop system. The idea of lead compensation is to change the structure of the digital controller by adding a real pole and a real zero, with the zero located to the right of the pole in the z-plane. This has the effect of changing the root locus, which allows us to place the closed loop poles in desirable locations, thereby achieving the desired transient response. Consider the conceptual example shown here, where the two plant poles are drawn in purple. If we use a proportional controller for this plant, the resulting root locus is shown in green. When we look at the stable closed loop poles that can be achieved by varying the controller gain, we see that these closed loop poles will be close to z equal to 1, which means that the closed loop response would be relatively slow. If we now add lead compensation to this controller, with the controller 0 placed to the right of the controller pole, then the root locus will be bent to the left. It would now be possible to choose closed loop poles with acceptable damping that would also give a faster closed loop response. Lead compensation is usually used in a similar context, where we want to improve the speed or damping, or both, of the closed loop response. Lead compensation is therefore used to improve the closed loop transient response. You might have noticed that the structure of the lead controller and its effect on the root locus is exactly the same as the continuous time root locus. You can therefore apply your knowledge of lead compensation for analog controllers to digital controller design. However, remember that the interpretation of poles and zeros in the z-plane differ from their interpretation in the s-plane. Note that the lead compensation structure does not only have to be added to a proportional controller. Lead compensation can be added to complex controller structures. To illustrate lead compensation for digital controllers, let's work through an example. The dynamics of the plant for this example is described by the analog transfer function shown here which has a pole at the origin of the s-plane and at s equal to minus 2. The specifications are that the step response of the closed loop control system should have an overshoot of 16.1% and a 2% settling time of less or equal to 2 seconds. We will first translate the specifications to an acceptable region in the z-plane, then we'll calculate the discrete equivalent plant model and lastly we'll design the controller using the digital root locus. From the transient specifications, we calculate the location of the dominant closed loop poles in the S-plane. The dominant closed loop poles can be written in terms of the damping, zeta, and natural frequency, omega, as shown here. From the overshoot specification, the damping is calculated as 0.5, and from the setting time specification, the natural frequency is calculated as greater than or equal to 4 radians per second. Before we can map these closed loop poles to the z-plane, we have to choose the sampling period. Since a digital control system cannot represent frequencies higher than the Nyquist frequency, the Nyquist frequency should be well above the closed loop bandwidth, which is approximately given by the natural frequency of the dominant closed loop poles. We can therefore calculate that the sampling period must be less than or equal to 0.91 seconds. We choose the sampling period to be about 5 times shorter than this limit which means that the sampling frequency is about 10 times higher than the closed loop bandwidth. We now map the specifications to an acceptable region in the z-plane. The mapping of the s-plane to the z-plane is given here and rewritten as a complex number with its magnitude and angle given in terms of the damping and natural frequency here. When we look at the settling time requirement, we see that 4 divided by zeta times omega n should be less than or equal to 2 which means that zeta times omega n should be greater than or equal to 2. The magnitude of the dominant poles in the z-plane is given by e to the power zeta times omega n times t, which we can calculate as less than or equal to 0.6703. This means that the dominant closed loop pole should lie inside a circle with radius 0.6703 in the z-plane as shown in red. We have previously seen that the constant damping curves in the z-plane are spirals and the curve corresponding to a damping of 0.5 is shown in green. 
The acceptable poles therefore are located on the part of the green curve that also lies within the red circle. We choose closed loop poles that just meet the specifications, that is, their natural frequency is 4 radians per second. We can now calculate the location of the desired closed loop poles to be 0 0.516 plus or minus J0.428. The next step is to discretize the plant model. The discrete equivalent plant model is calculated as 1 minus z to the power minus 1 times the z transform of g of s divided by s. When we substitute the plant transfer function, do partial fraction expansion, calculate the residues, apply the s and z transform tables, and manipulate the results to be in the standard transfer function format, we arrive at this discrete time transfer function, which has a gain of 0 0.0175 a 0 at z equal to minus 0 0.8797 and two poles, one at z equal to 1 and the other to z equal to 0 0.6703. We now go on to design a digital controller to control this equivalent discrete plant model. We first try the simplest controller structure, which is proportional control. When we draw the root locus for the proportional controller, we see that there is a locus to the left of the 0 and a locus between the two poles. This locus breaks away and joins the real axis far to the left of the zero. The desired closed loop poles are shown in blue. It is clear that the root locus does not pass through the desired closed loop poles and the locus should be bent to the left to achieve this. We therefore add lead compensation to the proportional controller. The controller with lead compensation is shown here. We have to choose the location of the zero, alpha 1, at the pole, alpha 2, as well as the controller gain, kc. We arbitrarily choose the controller zero to cancel the plant pole at 0 0.6703. Note there is no specific reason why we should do this, but it simplifies the calculation somewhat. The plant zero and poles are shown in purple, and the controller pole and zero shown in red. When we draw the root locus, we see that it has the same shape as before, but it has been pulled to the left. It should therefore be possible to choose the controller pole location, alpha 2, such that the root locus passes through the desired closed loop poles. To determine alpha 2, we use the angle condition, which says that phi 1 minus theta 1 minus theta 2 should be 180 degrees plus an integer multiple of 360 degrees. After calculating the angles and solving for alpha 2, we calculate alpha 2 to be 0 0.254. The last step is to calculate the controller gain for which we use the magnitude condition. The magnitude condition says that the magnitude of the loop transfer function at the closed loop pole should be equal to 1. After some manipulation, we arrive at a controller gain of 12.69. The design controller is therefore given by the transfer function shown here. Let's simulate the step response of this digital controller that controls the analog plant. The discrete time unit step reference input is shown in red and the continuous time plant output is shown in blue. We can see that the overshoot is close to the required 16% and the settling time is close to the required 2 seconds or less. This is the end of the example, but in practice one would iteratively adjust the controller design until the specifications are met exactly. In this video, we have seen how to use lead compensation to improve the transient response of a digital control system. In the example, we calculated the discrete equivalent plant model by hand, and we have drawn the root locus by hand. In practice, this would typically be done with numerical software packages. However, the understanding that comes with going through hand calculations allows one to efficiently use numerical software for iterative controller design.